I think the real estate side of the restaurant industry is probably the thing that young operators, that and construction cost would be the two things they underestimate the most. That's a, a, a great consideration is what is it going to cost us to break even in this biz building? And once we have that figure, we have to ask, well, then what kind of concept will allow us to hit that total and do better than that? Do you want your occupancy cost to be at about 7% of your total sales? Once it gets to 10%, it, it really is hard to make money. So you pay rent, then you pay what we all love is CAM, common area maintenance, and you pay the taxes for the landlord as well. So it's not just the, the dollar per square foot. And so the, the, the extras, they can be another 10 to $12 a foot. In 2010, when we opened Oku, I opened Oku for $300 a foot. That's china, glass, silverware, hiring the architect. That's literally walking into a raw space to opening night. Um, our latest restaurant was $700 a foot. And we're not buying nicer glassware. Taking on a large restaurant has all kinds of complexities that a small DIY sandwich shop doesn't have. We talk about it all the time that the cost to open the original Butcher and Bee versus the cost to build out the current Butcher and Bee is four times the amount, if not more. You're bringing in a larger staff. You have to get dishes. You need proper napkins. You need glassware. You have a much higher bill, water, electric. You have an entire back end, a full bakery staff. You're just your complexities are just compounding. You know, I heard of a restaurant paying $50,000 a month. Well, your sales have got to be almost seven to eight million dollars, which is astronomical. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, success in Charleston at the chef driven restaurants, uh, it's a two and a half million to three to three and a half. I'm sure there's some exception, but we all kind of talk. We are always looking for locations that nobody else is interested in. And the first Butcher and Bee was behind a chain link fence that had um, barbed wire and you had to close it at the end of every night and we didn't have a phone number and we were really tucked back there and we were five years ahead of the development in that area. I think bad location can be overcome by the right, right person. You see the right person go in that building and the place is packed. Uh, Pose on Sullivan's Island was five different restaurants in three years none of them worked and then Pose went in there and they've been killing it ever since. You walk into a space it's gonna speak to you and you're gonna make you know you're gonna make pull certain things from the energy of a room how how is the natural light how high are the ceilings uh, what are the surfaces that maybe you want to keep intact and you know um, an exposed brick wall which might be beautiful for what's let's say an Italian restaurant may not feel right for a Mexican restaurant. We own Oak on Broad Street. I would love to own the buildings on King Street because our rent is astronomical. Um, and I would love to own the building because our mortgage would be a lot less, right? Which would set us up better for success in business. You know, it's nice to own a building, but I think it's a misconception in the restaurant business that you need to own the building. Um, I think it depends, you know, you can, you can have a great lease that makes sense for you, that allows you to make money. My advice for anyone in the restaurant business is as soon as you can buy the building, buy it. <laughs>